This is Geometry, Chapter 13, Section 5, in which we will study the probabilities of independent and dependent events. A compound event is what it sounds like. It's something that has more than one part. The two parts could either be dependent or independent. If they're dependent, then one thing depends on the other. Independent things, the two outcomes don't have any impact on each other. Um, think about rolling dice. Okay. What I get on the first die has absolutely nothing to do with what I get on the second one. Flipping coins is the same idea. The coin doesn't remember it came up heads last time. The outcomes are totally independent of each other. Dependent events are something that does affect each other, such as if I draw a card from a deck and don't put it back in and then draw another card. The second draw, I've only got 51 choices left instead of the normal 52. So now everything is dependent on what happened the first time. That's the big story, is knowing whether they're independent or dependent. So, let's determine if some of these are independent or dependent. If we flip two coins, well, I kind of gave that away, didn't I? That's independent because the coin doesn't impact the next flip. If we draw a card and don't replace it, well, I just talked about that, that's dependent. Now, if I draw a card and then put it back in before I draw the second one, now it's independent because the cards are still 52 of them. Okay, the pot hasn't changed. The list of options hasn't changed. And then we have our friend Andrea here who selects a shirt to wear today and then obviously a different shirt to wear tomorrow. That's a dependent situation because her choices tomorrow are affected by which choice she made today. If she wears the blue shirt today, then she doesn't have that option tomorrow, so now her choices have been changed. Now that we know the difference between independent and dependent, let's look at how the probabilities work. If things are independent, then the probability that both things happen is just straight up multiply the two probabilities together. Probability of A and B both happening would be the probability of A times the probability of B. Now, if they're dependent, we have to make an adjustment for what happened in the first time first case. So we get this other funky looking little symbol here. We get the probability of A times the probability of B given that A occurred. Okay. This probability is different from this one. Probability of B given that A occurred, that means that A happened now what are your new options? Okay, we've taken the blue shirt out of play for our friend Andrea back there. So let's consider this situation. We're going to flip a coin four times. I want to know the probability of getting four tails. So I'm looking at the probability of going tails, then tails, then tails, then tails. Okay. This is independent. The coin doesn't remember what it did, so it's just going to be 1 out of 2 times 1 out of 2 times 1 out of 2 times 1 out of 2. And so I get 1 16th. You could give me a decimal for that. I believe it's 0 0.0625. So you could give that answer if you so chose. Okay. Here's another case. We have a coin being flipped and a die being rolled. We want the probability that we get a heads and then a three. 
Well, what happens on the coin has no effect on what happens on the die. So the probability of heads is 1 out of 2. The probability of getting a 3 on the die is 1 out of 6. So that makes a 1 out of 12 when you multiply. Okay. Three cards are going to be drawn here from a standard deck. Standard deck of cards has 52 cards in it. 13 hearts, 13 diamonds, 13 spades, 13 clubs. It has 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 jack, queen, king, and ace for each suit. The jack, the queen, and the king are considered face cards. Okay. If things ask about face cards, we're talking jack, queen, and king only. I want to know the probability that I'll get three hearts in a row if I don't replace the cards. Okay. So I'm looking for probability of a heart, and then a heart, and then a heart. Well, the first time, there's 13 hearts out of 52 cards. Now I'm holding one of the hearts, so there's only 12 hearts left in the deck out of the 51 cards that are there. Now I've drawn a second one. Now there's two in my hand. That leaves 11 in the deck out of 50. And when I multiply that together in my trusty calculator, it tells me it's 11 out of 850. And again, you could give me a decimal if you so chose, as long as it's equivalent. I have no idea what it would be, but I have both answers for the problems in the, uh, in the answer book, so we're good to go either way. Now we can use the same kind of thinking about dependent events to find what's called conditional probability. Okay. What is the probability that B occurred given that we already know A occurred? Okay. So we're going to look at a problem here. When two dice are rolled, we want the probability that one of the dice is a 4, given that we know the sum of the two is 9. Okay, I'm going to jump to the next page here because I have a table that, uh, that shows the sums we get when we roll two dice. If I roll a 1 on one die and a 1 on another, I get a 2. A 1 and a 2 gives me a 3, and so forth. Okay. This is a very useful table when you're rolling two dice. And I've given it to you conveniently there on your note sheet. We can use this to figure out problems like the one we're working on. Okay. When two dice are rolled, what's the probability that one of them is a 4, given that the sum is 9? So what they're asking for is how many times is 4 part of it when the sum is equal to 9? Well, the only ways to get a sum of 9 is with a 3 and a 6, or a 4 and a 5, or a 5 and a 4, or a 6 and a 3. Those are the only ways I can get a 9. So there are four ways to get a 9. Out of those four, two of them have a 4 involved. So 2 out of 4 is 1 half. Okay. Fairly straightforward stuff. The biggest thing is to keep straight whether it's independent or dependent. Whether one thing affects what happens with the other. Had questions along the way? Hopefully, you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.